I'm Beatriz Pisano, and from Aluna Theater, we bring you Radio Aluna Theater. An exciting new series of stories by artists and pioneers of Latin Canadian theater. Este podcast también está disponible en español. This is the third and final part of Leo by Rosa Laborde. The story so far. Leo, Rodrigo, and Isolda are becoming an adolescent love triangle. Isolda and Leo are seen flirting intimately by Rodrigo at the same time that an attraction between Leo and Rodrigo is on the rise. Rodrigo is the leader of the socialist youth, participating in the reconstruction of the country. Leo and Isolda do not care about social issues the way he does. Leo and Isolda have a moment of sexual intimacy. And at the end, Leo says Rodrigo's name. Salvador Allende is elected. Chile is the first country to ever democratically elect a socialist president. But his party faces strong opposition from right-wing parties, the private sector, and international interests. As political tensions rise in Chile, Rodrigo and Leo continue to passionately discuss their political views, fight, and, eventually, the boys kiss. As we begin, there is a scarcity, inflation, and part of the population begins to express discontent. Allende faces obstacles created to disarm his government and economic plan. Rodrigo has become a political leader among young people. The triangle between him, Isolda, and Leo enters adulthood. From a distance, we're ordinary. Just two young men walking home from the park. I walk into my house, my mother sits by the radio, knitting a scarf identical to the one I lost in the park in the rain with Isolda. The radio is on, and Salvador Allende fills the airwaves. I am politically passionless, but even still, I am not immune to the call of his voice. It sounds like Rodrigo. He's always been a good speaker. Yes. Like he was chosen by God. God said, you, Rodrigo, speak well and save the world. He does inspire one to be good. It's luck. Being chosen. Knowing without a doubt what you're meant to be doing with your life. Luck or drive? Luck. You have no drive, but you were born to be a poet, so you just know. There's no doubt. Are your hands sore? A little. But if everyone was born to do something great... Who would work in the factories washing the toilets? This is a great party. What are you talking about? There's no food, wine... I meant the party, the political... Oh, yes. Of course. My hands hurt. Let me see them. Hmm. You put a lot of strain on them today. Yes. Well, a builder you're not. Check. Excuse me? Just crossing another one off the list. Isolda counts herself among the unlucky. Her profession was not chosen for her by God. Isolda, you could be anything. The woman behind the man? That's up to you. What are we doing now? Anything, anything you, you want. want. Santiago de Chile. I am everything to everyone, and everyone wants something. They move, and I follow. They open, and I enter. Hushed in the protective and unshakable shadow of Los Andes, I am complete. Where there are mountains, there is the illusion of safety. Not so close. There's no one around. Just in case. Fine. It's dangerous. I know it is. Dangerous. I know. If anyone ever knew. They won't. They can't. It's you and me. It's the same as before. We're friends talking. It doesn't look different. I've always been different. Somehow. My parents call me an original. When other kids were just playing, I was discovering the origins of the game and why we love to play it. What is the reason? Why? I had to know. I have to know. You're not a horse, my father always says. Refuse to wear blinders. 
Give me a problem and I will come up with the best possible solution based on facts, always on facts and on history, because only when you know that which came before and only when you embrace your limitations can you possibly hope to make effective decisions that will enable you to become closer to the idea of perfection that will save you from the... God, I'm an essay of myself. I can't just... I have no solution for me. I don't know, every year I grow up a little more different. If my parents knew, you think they'd still call me an original? And smile when they said it? They don't have to know. No. Nobody has to know anything. Can you keep a secret? We bury our secrets in the ground. They intermingle with the dirt and soil, the stones and worms. They drink the rain and grow like roots and split the earth. Everything's changing. Can you feel it? Everything always changes. I don't like it. You hope for political and social change. Your life revolves around change. My life revolves around hope. Hope and change are very different. So you hope for change and then hate it when it comes? You're not listening to me. So stop talking. Leo! I'm right here. I'm here. Leo puts his hand on Isolda's neck and draws her to him. Everything's fine? Fine. Leo kisses Isolda's mouth. She kisses him back, then pushes him away. No! Guns, knives, Molotov cocktails. There's going to be a civil war. You worry too much. Do I? You do. <sighs> Leo kisses Isolda again, but she pulls back. Rodrigo's strange lately. What? He's different. I hadn't noticed. No? Why would you think that? I don't know. Why would I? What? Where is he anyways? How would I know? Rodrigo! Just follow them, Rodrigo. Please, hombre. Just follow. No, I'll be in the van with the others. You two will follow us in Soli's mom's car, okay? How long will it take? As long as it takes, Leo. We can't put a time limit on this kind of thing. We're building the clinic and the bridge. Shouldn't there be maybe a clinic crew and a bridge crew? Who knows how to build a bridge? It's a very complicated thing. It has to be well thought out. It would really defeat the purpose of a medical clinic if everyone died on a broken bridge on the way there. Would you like to be on the bridge crew, Soli? Me? <laughs> no. I can't. I can't have that kind of responsibility. I don't know how to build a bridge. Do you imagine that I haven't properly planned for everything? I wasn't thinking about you. I was thinking about the people. I have also been thinking about the people. Well, good. Then the people are thought of. I wasn't thinking of the people. At all, actually. Were you thinking of the people all night, Rodrigo? Is that what you were doing? When I called your house, no one knew where you were. You know what? I'd like to be on bridge crew. I was in the backyard, meditating. Meditating? <laughs> you would bury me alive with your beautiful lies. You will make a staggeringly impressive politician. Are we going to do like a rope bridge? Or a really sturdy kind of solid bridge? What do the people prefer? Who are you with? I'm worried about you, Soli. You're not yourself. You're smoking too much. There are circles under your eyes. Are you even eating? I don't want to eat anymore. <sighs> it's a luxury to have that option. There's no good food. Rice every day. Chicken sometimes. I hate chicken. I've always hated chicken, and now I stand in line for hours hoping for chicken. The truckers have all been bribed, so nothing makes it down here. This is how they plan to eliminate Allende. Starve the people. Make it his problem, his fault. You're so busy. You're both so busy. Entire universes are unfolding in my heart, and you're missing it. Pull yourself together. You are not the center. More out, less in. More out, less in. More out, less in? There are bigger things at stake here, Soli. What is bigger? What's out there or what's in here? In. Out. What? 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 What's out, Isolda? In. Excuse me. It's how she feels, Rodrigo. What are you doing? It's just... She has the right to feel the way that she does. I'm protecting her. Is that what you're doing? What's going on? Nothing, Soli. I'm here now. You need to open your eyes, Leo. There is life outside this little triangle. Just because you cater to every little need, every little emotion, it doesn't mean she has to. Not everyone wants to be like you, lost in your own head. I'm not. God, the certainty. The conviction, like there was never another possibility. 
This is the way it is. This is the way it should be. Where am I now, then? Huh? Where am I now? You're nowhere. Rodrigo? This isn't real. How can it not be real if you're here? There is no here. I'm here. I exist. You think you exist. Then I do. If I didn't exist, there would be no I to think that I exist. I can't see you. Yeah, well, I can't see you either. So then? I saw you. Isolda? I saw you. What? I saw you with him. Ah! I don't know what you're talking about. How could you prey on his weakness? You're an animal. His weakness? He has a weakness for men. It's an illness. He's sick. But you, you're just greedy and unfaithful. I'm unfaithful? You've been engaged to him since we were 11 years old. And I'll marry him and we'll be happy and you'll die sad and alone. How could you do this to me? Me. At the end of it all, we always come back to me. Me needing love. Me wanting more. Me all alone. And there's nothing left. No toilet paper, no flour, no fucking food. What a great idea. Let's help the unfortunate so we all end up with nothing. Maybe I am greedy. Maybe I am unfaithful. Maybe I would like a big house with big windows and a big car. Maybe if everyone is educated enough to get a good job, there won't be enough jobs. Maybe if I'd really known my father, I would be a better man. Maybe... It's time to stop, coward. It is the brave man who sacrifices himself for others. It is the coward who tells himself lies to soothe his empty life. I wasn't thinking. I was wrong. I just took what you wanted, not thinking she'd starve. This was nothing. It means nothing. The most meaningless things often give the most pleasure. And then they end. And now there is nothing but Isolda and Chile and making a difference. A martyr is born. Why don't you write a poem about it? I just might. You know what your poetry lacks, Leo? Tell me. Blood. Once, there was a cut. It was so deep and so long that it cut through the entire earth. People cried out for the pain of the injured little world. They put their lips right up to the swollen crack and sucked out the blood in stilted sobbing bursts. But the cut didn't heal, and rusted pennies filled the bellies of the bleeding, sucking hearts as they died one by- Stop it. The world doesn't want someone like you leading its people into the light. What's that supposed to mean? Was that the dream? All of Chile standing at your inauguration as you hold your lovely husband's hand? You are in the wrong world at the wrong time. You'll be lucky if they don't shoot you in the back and throw you in the sea. That was not so long ago. That's why we have to change things. For every man, woman, and child, equal opportunities, no discrimination. We don't change the world. The world changes us. That's garbage. When children starve and sell their emaciated bodies on the street for sex, someone is throwing out uneaten food. You can put it on the curb and never think of it again, or you can take a hard look at yourself, Leo, and know that somewhere, someone is dying because of you. Because you didn't have the balls to say enough of this garbage. Who are you talking to? Go ahead. Mock me. Does it make you feel better? You feel invincible, lounging in your little prison of lies? I live a lie? Your father died! Let's start there. Excuse me? Cancer. He smoked too much. He was not at Chase's side during any revolution. He did not escape near death on a freighter that mysteriously vanished in the Bermuda Triangle. He just died at home with a blackened lung. My father. My father. What? My father. My father. What? My father. What, Neil? What? <laughs> My father was an unremarkable man in every way. He did smoke too much. He also ate too much and too quickly and with his mouth horribly open. One Saturday afternoon, my mother made tomato salad. I can smell red tomatoes picked from the garden, skinned and diced, interspersed with practically benign slivers of onion. I can taste the sweet tang of salt on my mother's fingers, which I would lick whenever she finished mixing, always with her hands. A seasoned woman cooking is, after all, the secret to a flavorful meal, she would say. I can see him shoveling spoonful after spoonful of her loving mixture into his mouth like it was no more than gruel, slurping the salted olive oil juice while the fleshy redness mashed into his uneven teeth. Mash, smack, cluck, slurp. I couldn't lift my fork off the table. He looked at me and, with his mouth full, said, Eat, kid. You look like an orphan. 
I wish I was an orphan because you must be the most disgusting father in the world. He swallowed, silent, unmoving. Suddenly, a monstrous belch cracked out of his face and he laughed. Careful what you wish for, kid. Careful what you wish for. They say a cancer walked into his mouth, over his throat, grabbed hold of his left lung, and ate it whole. Two days later, my mother went completely blind. No hay nada más que ver. There is nothing left to see. No. My father was at Che Guevara's side during the Bolivian Revolution. He disappeared on a freighter traversing the Bermuda Triangle. He chewed slowly and inspired many with his calm, intelligent manner. He loved me deeply. That's my story. We all need one. I mean, who the hell wants to live in this shit? I wouldn't live anywhere else. I couldn't. India, Paris, New York. You have no desire to... This is where I exist. In this spaghetti strand of a country, between these borders, like a picture in a frame. Pictures are one-dimensional. You used to talk nicer with me. You both did. Wait, I lost that. Is that my lighter? Not anymore. Did you know that when you touch a frog, its whole body feels like it's been cut with razor blades? Their skin is that sensitive. People die from smoking too much. Random unknown people? Or fathers? You exist everywhere, not just here. Yeah. Well, my focus on reality may not be as sharp if I'm out of frame. <laughs> There has been a military revolt in Chile. The situation remains confused. One unconfirmed report says the president, Salvador Allende, has committed suicide. Another indicates he's taken refuge in the Argentine embassy. Borders with neighboring countries have been closed. Telecommunications have been shut down. There is virtually no contact with the outside world except for scattered radio broadcasts, and no one knows whether they are controlled by those backing or opposing the Western Hemisphere's first democratically elected Marxist government. Ay! Leo! Mommy, my mother hasn't broken a glass since 1966. Her last smash was my father's favorite mug. She cried for four days and then began wandering the house like a mime, sensing the energy of things, until finally announcing that she would never break anything in our home again. It is September 11th, 1973. There is more greed than love in this world. Are you sure he's dead? Give a man a cake and what does he do? Ask for a glass of milk to go with it. Shot. Just like that. I'm not a horse. Just like that? My father always said you are not a horse. Refuse to wear blinders. Salvador Allende Gosens, born July 26th, 1908. He was a Leo, like me. Given the choice, what did people choose? God or a golden calf? His last words, Long live Chile. Long live the people. Long live the workers. Viva Chile. Viva el pueblo. Viva los trabajadores. Mami. Es más fácil ser ciego que vidente. It is easier to be blind than to see. We hide behind closed doors after dark, listening to the military trucks crunching over concrete. Was she there? No. No one from any of her classes has seen her for four days. The whole family's in a complete panic. You saw them? I go every day. Why didn't you tell me I would go with you? You're free to go. I didn't want to disturb. You haven't checked in once? I telephoned. Their daughter is missing and you telephoned? They have things on their mind. Damn right they do. So you go over, you hold hands, you say I'm on the lookout if I hear anything. You bring food, news, anything, but you do not telephone. I thought I was doing the right thing. For who? Scared some of the fear might rub off on you? The thought of her mother crying on your shoulder too real for you to stomach? I just thought... Of yourself. Who else is there? In the end, when the current is dragging you down, the whirlpool, the whirlpool, like the universe knows, we're entering into a darker place, like they knew this was where life was leading socialists. There's nothing left. You capitalistic military, my feet, 
my fingers, my blood, into the triangle. There are three sides, the devil's triangle. No, I am not one of those meditative people who take comfort in solitude. Hit me, bleed me, fuck me, break me, but don't leave me alone. We're leaving. You can't. Doesn't solve anything. Stay and fight. Or starve for peace. Or there has to be something. Something less cowardly, less afraid. This country is not safe for us right now. This country? Chile. We call it Chile. It's our home. Make sure you're in by curfew. Never walk alone. Don't trust anybody. Where were you taken? You were taken, right? Right off campus? On my way to class. Nowhere is safe. Not if you supported Allende. What did they do? What is the obsession with other people's pain? I'm sorry. You should be. Isolda. Goodbye. Isolda goes. Night falls. Come with me. We lie in his single bed, surrounded by books, books everywhere, and dim lighting. He'll go blind reading like this. He breathes only to his heart, too quickly. I want to feel his pain, but I feel nothing. Pictures of Salvador Allende, Pablo Neruda, I wonder if he's next, bombard me. Men with feeling. Men with purpose. Maybe his parents don't know. Maybe they've decided to let it go, but for the first time since I've known Rodrigo Ferro, I fall asleep in his bed with my arm around him. There's a light in my eye, a yank on my wrist, a punch in my belly, and fear. Leo? Shh, Rodrigo, just follow. My legs walk me out the door like they knew this was where life was leading. Into a truck, door slam. Quiet. Bumps on tires, tires on bumps. Mierda. Stop. Doors open, jump out, walk to building, walk to building. Rodrigo, walk to building. Rodrigo. No. Follow the leader, Rodrigo, this way. Please, hombre. No, Leo. No puedo. Some men aren't meant to follow. No! No! I can't see! I can't see, mommy! Abre los ojos, Leo. Sí, abre los ojos. Feliz cumpleaños a ti. Feliz cumpleaños a ti. Feliz cumpleaños, Leonardo Francisco Mellas Rosas. Feliz cumpleaños a ti. Abre los ojos. And suddenly I can see. My throat is closing. I can't swallow, can't make a sound. For what? Words? Socialism? Capitalism? Theories? Principles? Bullshit! Ugh. If there is enough food, why shouldn't we feed everybody? I can't even see your face. Why? Why are you doing this? Ugh. I kissed Isolda Vergara for the first time with these lips. She bit me, not on purpose. I liked it. <sighs> she caught me kissing Rodrigo Ferro with the same lips and punched me with her right hand on my left cheek. Less because he was a boy, more because he wasn't her. <sighs> Until I can't feel it. Until I can't feel it. <sighs> Until I can't feel it. <laughs> and then the hit hits and I don't care. I watch it like boxing on television. Thank God that's not me. <laughs> Thank God I'm not there. But if I'm not there, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? When I'm with you, the way the bottoms of my feet hit the concrete, the way the air eats my breath, I'm as close as I can be to what it must feel like to really be alone. You're not alone. You're with us. I know. That's what's so beautiful about it. Being with us makes you feel alone? In the best possible sense. Not like when I'm by myself and it feels like there's... like there's pieces missing. But I'm here completely. I'm part of everything when I'm with you, and it must be... 
I think, what being alone is supposed to feel like. A suspended individual in a sea of everyone. Only when the three of us are together? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the truth is that alone, neither of you are all that much. <laughs> but if you were combined, you would make the perfect man. I've had that same thought. It might not have been what she meant. Will it always be this good? Right here it will. To cease to be seen, vanish from sight, to cease to exist or be known, desaparecer, now you see me. And that is the end and the final part of Leo by Rosa Laborde. On this episode, you heard Augusto Bitter as Leo, Arlene Aguayo Stewart as Isolda, Carlos Gonzalez Bio as Rodrigo, and Francesca Centelli as Leo's mother. Direction by Carlos Diaz, original sound design by Thomas Ryder Payne, new music by Marcelo Puente. Production, editing, and additional sound design by Charles Ketchba and Adam Mickman. Translation and script coordination by Bruce Gibbons Fell. Season 1 theme music by Brandon Valdivia. Radio Aluna Theater is produced by Aluna Theater with the support from the Met Health Foundation, the City of Toronto, the Canada Council for the Arts, the Ontario Arts Council, the Toronto Arts Council, and Playwrights Workshop Montreal's Glasgow Translation Residency in Tadoussac. Aluna Theatre is Beatriz Pisano and Trevor Schwellness with Sue Ballant and Gia Namis. For more information about Aluna, visit us at alunatheatre.ca. Follow Aluna Theatre on Twitter or Instagram, or just like us on Facebook. And this March, from the 7th to the 24th, join us at Theatre Pass Murai for the premiere of Chicho, a new play written and performed by Augusto Bitter, who you've just heard voicing Leo in this radio production. For more information about Chicho and for tickets, visit alunatheatre.ca. See you there. <laughs>